When my husband's mom, Catherine, found out my husband had to move abroad for work, she decided we had to leave the house. We had nowhere to go, so I took my two-year-old daughter to the park, feeling lost and unsure of what to do. Suddenly, police officers surrounded me, asking me to go to the station. It was raining hard, and I was shivering from the cold as I followed them. At the station, I was surprised to see someone unexpected waiting for me. Her name was Emma, and she told me she's turning 35 this year. Emma shared her story, how she met her husband, Bob, at work, and they got married after dating for a year. They had a daughter named Lily, and they lived with Bob's mom, Cabrin. Emma explained that they used to rent a place, but after Catherine's husband died and she started having knee problems, they decided to buy a new apartment and live together. They thought it was better because the apartment had an elevator, which made life easier for Catherine. Buying an apartment was cheaper than a house, and since Bob's job often required travel, they chose somewhere with good transportation access. But even though we bought the house, my husband's transfer was put on hold for a while. However, he still travels a lot for work, even more than other employees. He goes on business trips about once a week to different states. With a two-year-old daughter, it's really stressful for me when he's away. At first, my mother-in-law, Catherine, was helpful. But now she doesn't help with taking care of our daughter at all. In fact, she makes more work for me. She leaves her dishes dirty and cooking utensils unwashed, which adds to my workload. When I ask her to help out, she just apologizes and promises to do better next time. But I've noticed she rinses them when my husband is around, which makes me think she's doing it on purpose to make things difficult for me. Sometimes she'll offer to get something from the store for me, but then later she'll say she actually needed something herself. This happens a lot. I used to think she was just forgetful or that her bad knees made moving painful for her, so I wanted to help. But now I'm starting to feel like she's intentionally causing problems. I've thought about talking to my husband about it, but he's already stressed from work, and I don't want to add to his burden. This behavior from Catherine has been going on for years, and when I talked to a friend about it, she said it sounds like Catherine is bullying me. She suggested talking to my husband, but I worry that if I do, Catherine, who doesn't have any other family, might end up in a facility. At one point, I thought it would be better to just endure it. However, one day, something happened that changed how I felt. I planned to drop off Lily at my parents' place. They love having Lily over and sometimes she stays for sleepovers. Thanks for always bringing Lily. We look forward to these visits. Why don't you stay over sometimes too? My mom said. I'd love to, but I'm worried about leaving Catherine alone. I'll head home. Don't spoil Lily with too many toys, I replied. After a brief chat, I decided to return to the apartment where Catherine was waiting. But when I got there, I realized I'd left the keys at home. At first, I was concerned. But then I remembered Catherine was home and decided to ring the intercom. I dialed the room number, but there was no response. I wondered if she had gone out, so I decided to wait outside for a while. But Catherine never returned. After about two hours, it got dark and I followed another resident into the building. Catherine rarely goes out at night, so I was sure she was home. I pressed the intercom button, but still got no response. Eventually, I heard a faint sound from inside, confirming Catherine was indeed there. I tried the intercom a few more times, but she refused to come out. Feeling defeated, I stayed at a nearby motel for the night, planning to return when Bob was back from his business trip. When I told Bob what happened, he was upset on my behalf, but Catherine just said, oh, maybe I didn't hear because of my hearing. I'm getting old, you know, trying to hide her smirk, relieved to be back inside. I grabbed my keys and went to pick up Lily from my parents' house. After discussing the situation with them, they said, sounds like she's giving you a hard time. If it becomes too much, you're always welcome back here. Their comforting words brought tears to my eyes. But in front of Lily, I quickly wiped them away and headed home. For a while, there were no more issues with Catherine. Then, out of the blue, Bob's international transfer got finalized. A permanent move, not just a business trip. Yeah, we finally bought a place, and now this international assignment.
What do you think? Bob asked. I couldn't answer Bob's question immediately. Considering the potential stress for Lily, I decided it would be best for the two of us to stay in the U.S. Soon after the decision, Bob had to leave for Europe. Although he was concerned about us, he seemed too swamped with work to give it much thought. So the life of me, Lily, and Catherine was about to begin. However, as expected, living with Catherine turned sour the moment Bob left for Europe. Her attitude changed dramatically. That day, a storm was approaching, and it was dangerous to venture outside. Yet Catherine dropped a bombshell on me. Now that Bob's gone, wouldn't it be better if you and Lily live out? She said. Excuse me? What do you mean? I asked, shocked. Just what I said. I'll take over from here. I just feel I can't relax with strangers in the house. I'd appreciate it if you could leave right now, Catherine replied. I was in complete disbelief at Catherine's audacity. It's true that Catherine and I aren't related, but I've always tried my best to make our cohabitation comfortable. At the very least, I've always treated her as family. However, to Catherine, it seems we were just an afterthought. I was considering gathering my things and heading back to my parents' place when she told me, instead of dilly-dallying, why don't you just get out? Before I knew it, dressed as we were, Lily and I were thrown out of our own home. No matter how much I banged on the door, Catherine wouldn't come out. Lost and confused, I carried Lily through the pouring rain to a nearby park. There was a roof there, which I thought might offer some shelter from the rain. Ideally, I would have checked into a motel or returned to my parents' place, but I'd left both my wallet and phone inside the house. I felt helpless and sat in the park, trying to figure out our next move. I'm not sure how much time passed in the torrential downpour. Overwhelmed by fatigue and cold, I began to doze off. It was already dark, and even though it was summer, the cold was biting, and I feared we might catch a cold. As bad as things were, it seemed the only option was to walk to my parents' home, but it would be a three-hour walk. As I was contemplating our situation, I saw two distant lights approaching. Given the rain, I couldn't see clearly, but the lights belonged to two police officers. I thought maybe they could help. But before I could approach, one of them called out to me. Are you Emma? And is this little one Lily? The officer asked. I was surprised the officer knew my name but weakly replied, Yes, that's us. Then the officer said, Please come to the station with us. Why the police station? I wondered if something was amiss. Urged by the officer, Lily, and I got into the patrol car. We were freezing from being out in the rain for so long, but the officers had thoughtfully brought large towels. You might need these. We've got some spare clothes back at the station for you they said kindly. Wondering why they knew about us and why we were headed to the police station, I inquired, how did you know where to find us? They responded, we'll explain everything once we're back at the station. For now, just try to relax. Exhausted, I soon fell asleep and woke up to find we had arrived at the police station. Following the officers inside, to my surprise, I saw Catherine and my uncle. Uncle, what are you doing here? I asked. He was contacted by Bob. Bob suspected you might be having issues with his mom, and since he's abroad, he wanted me to keep an eye on things for him, my uncle explained. According to my uncle, Bob had spoken to him about this issue. Before he said Bob had requested him to keep an eye on things since he couldn't be there himself, being overseas. It turns out he saw us in the rain earlier today. He was considering taking us in himself, but thought Catherine's behavior was extreme, so he reported to the police. That's why the officers knew our whereabouts and came to get us. Catherine had also been asked to come to the police station. She sat on a sofa glaring at me, seemingly clueless about why she was there. Why do I have to be here? I have a bad knee, you know. If Bob was here, this wouldn't be happening, Catherine complained. But this entire situation was a result of Bob asking my uncle for help. In discussions with the police, there was a high likelihood that the events might have legal implications, hence I was advised to consider hiring an attorney. An attorney? That's an overreaction. I just locked the door, that's all. I didn't do anything else, 
Catherine defended herself. Do you even realize what you've done? You threw Emma and a little child out in torrential rain. That's not something forgivable. My uncle stood up for us and stated that in fact, I was the rightful owner of the house. That's impossible. Bob is the head of the household. He's the rightful owner. Now that he's not here, it should be mine, Catherine insisted. Catherine was under the impression that Bob was the owner, but she was mistaken. Actually, my uncle runs a real estate business and got us a great deal on a condo. Bob had recommended that the property be put under my name. I was indifferent at the time, but now I'm glad I heeded Bob's advice. Later on, following my uncle's advice, I decided to hire a lawyer. The lawyer said it would be challenging to evict Catherine. Therefore, the best course of action might be to place her in a care facility. Upon hearing this, I immediately called Bob to explain the situation. Bob hadn't anticipated the issue would escalate this much and said he'd like to return from Japan to discuss it properly. He also said he was considering placing Catherine in a facility, unaware of all this. Catherine, despite being at the police station, casually snacked on some crackers. I couldn't return to the house with Catherine, so I decided to take shelter at my parents' place until Bob returned. Bob would be back in a week, giving me time to ponder our next steps. If Bob wouldn't support me, then divorce seemed like the only option. Regret filled me, wishing I had sought advice sooner. A week later, Bob returned from Europe and was at the house with Catherine. So I moved back home from my parents' place. Given the urgency of his return, Bob had to go back to Europe soon. He could only stay in Japan for a few days, so we needed to discuss our next moves. I've heard some things from Emma's uncle. Is all of that true? Bob asked. It's all lies. I haven't done anything. Emma's plotting something to evict me. Catherine stubbornly refused to admit any wrongdoing. She even claimed I was scheming against her. Bob, who should have been on my side, seemed to want to consider Catherine's perspective. I get it. So, do you have any evidence to prove Emma's plotting something? Evidence? Of course not, Catherine insisted. Emma, do you have any evidence? Bob turned to me. To be honest, I've been so busy with work, I haven't been able to keep an eye on things. I'm not sure who to believe, I admitted. I handed Bob something I had with me. What's this? he asked. I gave Bob a voice recorder I had been using. It contained recordings of Catherine, who not only evicted me, but also often berated me. When Bob played it, he heard Catherine's voice saying things like, such a worthless wife. I wonder why he even married you. Hearing this, Catherine quickly began to defend herself. This is taken out of context. Everyone has their moments, right? I was just frustrated at that time. But it was just this once, even as Catherine claimed this, a barrage of recorded verbal abuses played from the voice recorder. There were countless instances, and even some which weren't captured on the device. Bob's hand holding the voice recorder trembled with tension and anger. Meanwhile, Catherine looked guilt-ridden. Mom, what is this about? Bob asked, but Catherine remained silent. If you won't answer, then I assume this is all true. If so, I need to protect Emma and Lily. You understand that, right? Bob said. I had never seen Bob angry in all the years we've been together. Catherine, probably seeing the side of Bob for the first time too, looked frightened and shrunk back, unable to say a word. Afterward, there were several discussions until Bob's return to Europe. I asserted that I could no longer live with Catherine, considering Lily's presence and not wanting a repeat of this event. Bob seemed to share my sentiment, leaning towards placing Catherine in a care facility. However, Catherine strongly opposed the idea, complicating the discussions. Regardless, I've decided to sell the house. So, you can't stay here anymore. If you don't want the facility, you'll need to find another place, I told Catherine. How dare you decide this on your own? I won't allow you to sell the house. Catherine resisted the idea of selling the house, but it was a tough request to accommodate. That's because Lily and I had decided to move to Europe. Bob regretted not being more present for his family and wanted to be there for us moving forward. 
Although I was hesitant about living abroad, knowing Bob would be with us reassured me. Besides, Lily is only two, and it would be good for her to practice her communication skills in Europe. Therefore, selling the condo, which still had a mortgage, was the only option. If we left it as it was, Catherine would have to cover the mortgage, considering she's on a fixed income. She doesn't have that kind of money given her future prospects. Someone should be around to assist her. Despite our efforts, Catherine was adamant about not moving into a facility. So we had to forcefully place her in one. I'm sorry, but I've got to head back to Europe. Could you handle any procedures required here? Bob asked before heading back. With help from those around me, I managed to finalize Catherine's admission into the facility. The facility staff kept me updated on Catherine's condition, but it seems she's not doing well. It'd be one thing if she were just down, but apparently she's been giving people there a hard time. Before heading to Europe, I went to visit her to see how she was doing, but she lashed out at me, saying, What's the big idea? Why have you locked me up in this place? She even vented her frustrations on the staff, complaining, How can you expect anyone to eat this food? Isn't there something more flavorful? This isn't nearly enough. The beds are uncomfortable, and other residents keep making snide remarks. I'm going to lose my mind in here. When I apologized to the staff, they were very understanding. It's all good, one of the staff members assured me. We see this kind of behavior often. Just leave it to us. We'll keep you in the loop. And if anything comes up, we'll give you a ring. So don't you worry. Despite all the harassment I got from her since we used to live together, I couldn't help but feel worried as I headed to Europe. Upon arriving in Paris, Bob met me at the airport and we headed to the apartment we'd rented. They say rents in Paris are higher than in Texas, but since Bob's company gives him an allowance for housing, we were lucky to find a spacious and affordable place. The neighbors in our building are super friendly and have been very kind to me, even though I don't speak French fluently. Yesterday, a neighbor shared some wine and cheese with me. In return, I gave them some mac and cheese. Meanwhile, I'm gradually learning French along with my daughter Lily. I know there's a limit to self-study, so I've also enrolled in a language school. There are a lot of Americans there, many of whom, like me, are new to France. I've made some friends there and am really enjoying my life in Paris. Back in the States, I had to always be concerned about Catherine, which often prevented me from fully enjoying outings with friends. But here, I can indulge in leisurely lunches just the way I like. The only concern right now is Lily. She's still too young for kindergarten. Kids here usually start kindergarten the year they turn five, so I hope she picks up enough French by then. Fortunately, Lily seems to be catching on pretty quickly. I'm thinking of getting a job once Lily starts preschool. Bob says he's okay with me staying at home, but living in Paris has made me want to explore more opportunities. Seeing how ambitious and confident people are here has ignited something within me. I've become friends with a waitress at a nearby cafe, and she hinted there might be a job for me there. That cafe isn't only popular among the American community, many of their customers are also learning English. There might be challenges ahead, but since coming to France, Bob and I have been communicating much better. I feel more confident in expressing my feelings, and I believe no matter what happens, we'll face it as a family. Right now, I feel happier than I've ever been in my life.